Hello and welcome to the Connecting Minds podcast. My name is Christian Yordanov and thank you so much for joining me today. On today's episode, I have a chat with Reed Davis, who is the founder and CEO of Functional Diagnostic Nutrition, which is a certification that teaches you how to run and interpret functional lab tests in order to identify hidden health challenges, metabolic imbalances that can cause or contribute to a myriad of health problems. So this is uh, one of the most life-changing things that I've done is taking this course. What's actually mind-blowing is that doctors are taking this course so they can learn stuff that wasn't taught to them in medical school, which is looking at causes of dysfunction rather than diagnosing diseases and treating the symptoms of those diseases with medications which are very often toxic and cause other problems. So even doctors are are realizing that yes, there is a better way, the functional model, which is not new, it's just, it's not very popular yet. But yeah, the functional model looks at deeper in the person, what's going on deeper in the physiology of the body, Uh, what imbalances or healing opportunities exist there that can be addressed with natural means. So uh, diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, supplementation in order to remove those obstacles to health so that the body using its innate intelligence that's hardwired into our DNA, into our being um, to, to restore function and find equilibrium and the the normal equilibrium of the body is is health. That's our normal way of being. And in order to reach that level of health, you have to somewhat become a health detective and investigate what's going on there uh, underneath that's contributing to less than optimal health, remove those obstacles to health, restore function, and eventually the body will get back to health. So this is what the functional diagnostic nutrition course teaches you. Again, this is probably the most life-changing thing that I did. Um, As part of the course, you run lab tests on yourself. So I started with a comprehensive hormone test where I saw my, you know, I was, I remember I was, when you fill out the form for the test, you say, what's the purpose? What, 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 what uh, are you trying to overcome by running this test? And I just wrote, I, I'm just looking to optimize my health. And when the test came back, um, it my hor- my testosterone was super low. My estrogens were super low. My cortisol was pretty high. So it's showing a lot of kind of stress. And I was completely taken aback by how I felt I felt pretty good. I thought I was in great health. Uh, I was eating really well, going to sleep early and all that stuff and taking a lot of supplements. But it's that's the problem. You know, a lot of us think we feel good and we we don't know how good we can actually feel, right? So I after that, I kind of did a, a, a poop test or a stool test. I identified some parasites that were probably contributing to the to the low hormones, to the high cortisol, to the kind of increased stress that was shown on the the test. And stress doesn't necessarily have to be psychological. Stress can be uh, biochemical, uh, physiological, uh, you know, it can be infl- inflammation. So it can be the immune system uh, being in overdrive. So there's a lot of different types of stress that can contribute to dysfunction or less than optimal health. And yeah, so I found those parasites, uh, yeast overgrowth, uh, uh, potentially pathogenic bacteria. <laughs> and yeah, after doing these um, bacterial protocols, herbs and, and probiotics and stuff, I started feeling really good. And I I started doing hair tests on myself every three, four months. And I noticed that the levels of heavy metals in my hair started increasing every time I did a hair test which is an indication that the body is now dumping all of these stored heavy metals after years of accumulation, which we all have that, you know, and 
yeah then after uh, like um, months months later i was doing food sensitivities tests and just a number of different kind of tests and i always found something with which i could further improve my health further optimize my health and i started feeling amazing that that, that you see that's the thing i i thought i was good feeling good before but i was drinking a lot of coffee which can really mask energy problems and if you're not sleeping well and stuff like that it can really like if you use stimulants during the day it can mask a lot of health issues or less than optimal health and then if you use kind of sedatives in the evening like like wine or or beer or whatever to calm you down and help you fall asleep it can kind of mask sleep problems as well so doing this fdn course uh absolutely changed my life and it has allowed me to help a lot of people and i'm hoping a ton more people in the in the coming years and decades it uh, it gave me the foundation to spend almost a year of my life after the, i did the course to research and write a book on autism which you may not know i, I actually have a book published and um th it was all because i did this course right so i was very honored to have reed come on the podcast and tell us basically how how he came up the with the fdn methodology what the philosophy is what's what's it all about what what is what are the five principles he calls dress for health success so d-r-e-s-s -S, uh, diet rest exercise supplementation and stress reduction so this is what what drives the protocols that help one restore health in their body right so he's a very cool guy he's been around the block a few times he really knows his stuff and he has created basically he he has created the highest quality most elite level health coaching certification out there and i honestly have looked at a lot of other health coaching certifications now and I don't feel like I need to do any other certification in order to 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 be qualified to be a you know a, a very effective health coach. That's not to say that I I think I know it all. I I'm literally every single day I'm learning new things, and the more I learn, the more I realize how much how complex nutrition is and and functional medicine and just the human body and the ways it can break down and the lab testing and there's just so many things to know but what this what what you learn on the course is the foundations that allow you to you basically learn how to learn more and it just creates this if you're really into it it creates an insatiable thirst for knowledge so that's why i keep buying books and listening to audiobooks and uh reading research papers and so on um so if you are yourself interested in some type of health coaching certification if you have i think the biggest factor that should drive this is if you have a desire to help other people uh, so if you really do have the desire i would highly encourage you to listen to read what he says and check out that there's a link in the show notes to go check out the uh, functional diagnostic nutrition uh, website if you're looking to get certified uh, in this area, you can you will not go wrong with this certification with this course. I hope you enjoy this um, interview with Reed. Let me know how you like it. If you have any questions about FDN and the and the process, uh, feel free to reach out to me by email or social media. I'll help. I'll kind of uh, answer any questions uh, that you might have. It's it's so important that more people get into this industry you, because you probably know how rampant chronic disease is in our society and how little the conventional medical system is doing to actually properly address these uh, chronic health problems. So we need more people out there educating others on how to, how to take better care of themselves, how to sell, take control of their own health, become educated and, and equipped to to make the right choices to improve their health and stay healthy for life this, this is what this is what you will learn uh, on the functional diagnostic nutrition certification so thank you once again for joining me today and without further ado here is reed davis from functional diagnostic nutrition
Connecting Minds is a space dedicated to honoring the amazing authors, researchers, clinicians, artists, and entrepreneurs who are contributing to our collective evolution or simply making the world a better place. These thought-provoking conversations are intended to expand our horizons, so come with an open mind and let us grow together. Here is your host, Christian Yordanov. Today on the Connecting Minds podcast, it's a great honor to have Reed Davis, the CEO of Functional Diagnostic Nutrition. Reed, thank you so much for joining us today, man. And thank you so much for having me here. So I think let's start at the beginning. Can you tell folks uh, what is your background and how did you come about to uh, found uh, Functional Diagnostic Nutrition, please? Yeah, it's a... Um, I always enjoy talking about that. You know, in the 90s, uh, I was saving the planet, air, birds, water, trees, bees. You know, I worked in an environmental law area. And then I started noticing how bad it was. And, and the, these air, birds, water, trees, bees, they're, they're dying. You know, and we're, we're um, facing all kinds of, of uh, you know, destruction there. And I started wondering, well, what about people? You know, and even me, I, I didn't want anything sneaking up on me. And I think we're all responsible for taking care of ourselves. You know, we want to be in control of our own destiny. So, again, I didn't want any, anything sneaking up on me. So I went to work in a wellness center and I was hired to run the business. But uh, the owner, this is just such a stroke of good fortune. The owner uh, was a chiropractor who, who was just starting her to get her diplomat in nutrition. And she said I could go along with her, uh, more or less as an assistant, and uh, then work on her patients in between my classes. And it's just, uh, just I couldn't pass that up. And, and um, that's when I fell in love with the clinical side of the business, just face to face. So I started helping all of her clients from a nutritional point of view. And uh, what really, really just blew my mind was that most patients coming in had chronic health conditions. They'd already seen four or eight or 10 or more practitioners and weren't better yet. And again, remember I came out of the law field. So I thought, you know, as a consumer advocate, even as a planetary and, you know, uh, mm. conservationist, um, here's just one more area that I could be useful in. Like I mm. thought they must be getting ripped off by, where, you know, what do you mean you've seen eight people and you're not better yet? So that began my uh, running of the labs and investigating. I thought naively that I would be the last person they needed to see. That's the service I wanted to provide to stop the cycle of trial and error. Mm. So I spent the next 10 years running thousands of labs on thousands of people and uh, discovered some patterns that just work, you know, what, what to look for, what, what are these constellation of healing opportunities? And that's a key f phrase right there, healing opportunities. Um, so anyone with a chronic health condition needs to look at these areas that we discovered. And then they need to uh, not just take something for it. Like, like in my nutrition courses I was taking, it was mostly selling supplements, which not only didn't work, but it would just, there's no satisfaction in that. Just here, take this, you know? Yeah. So, um, we, I really explored the, the lifestyle that's required to reverse chronic degenerative conditions in most cases. Mm -hmm. So, you know, after 10 years, thousands of cases, uh, we had a lot of, uh, good fortune again. And, and, uh, you, you can't do that much work and not make some observations. So finally, you know, the, the observations I made and learned how to capitalize on those observations by teaching the people what to do uh, became the, that was the foundations of the functional diagnostic nutrition course, mm -hmm. which I started teaching in 2008, a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's, yeah, that's a, it's a really great story. And I, yeah, I, I love hearing it because um, like you said, if you work with thousands of clients or patients, depending on whether you're a doctor or not, uh, you just can't help but make observations. So can you tell us what are some of the observations 
that you um, discover then uh, what are what are the so with that what are the core principles that you teach in sure. uh, functional diagnostic nutrition? You know, I can tell you what they are, and I can tell you how they came about because w- when I wasn't running the clinic and and uh, and seeing uh, some of the doctors patients in, uh, in between my classes, uh, just even in the first year that I worked there, um, I saw hundreds and hundreds of people. But when the clinic was closed, it was only open three days a week. So on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I, I bought a bone density testing machine and I went out and I had a, a, a route. So I went, um, I had about 23 different locations I set up where I could do my bone density testing. And this was a lot of work, but I didn't know any better back then i just you know work hard hey, it's a good thing to do um and and uh, all these women who showed up for their bone density test uh needed their hormones checked so i became in the first year or or two i ran thousands of hormone tests and i found out that most people have some imbalances if they're not healthy, especially if they have weak bones. Uh, that was just one area, but, but I found out these people had all these other complaints on top of their weak bones, or maybe even their bones were good. We, we, I had a real uh, DEXA machine. It wasn't, wasn't a toy. It was a serious piece of equipment. I had to get certified to use it. And, um, and then I would test their hormones and they would uh, thank me because they were on a, the road to either, you know improving their bone density and started feeling better. When your hormones are out of balance, yeah. you should feel a little bit better and um, sometimes a lot better. But then obviously, you know, the same clients that I was working with then would say, well, you know, I've got this digestive thing going on or I've got this, this other. And so over a 10 year period, I you know, just started adding another lab and adding another lab and and came up, you know, and I tried a lot of different labs uh, looking for lots of these imbalances and dysfunctions upstream. And so I I got, I boiled it down to hormones, the immune system, digestion, detoxification. And that was good enough for a few years. And then I discovered about energy production on a cellular level and the nervous system balance, you know, the autonomic, parasympathetic, sympathetic. So that H-I-D-D-E-N, hidden, it's very easy to remember. And it's again, hormone, immune digestion, detoxification, energy production and nervous system. Sounds simple. It kind of is, but it took a long time to discover that these were the things that if I looked at those in every client, then I'd be able to take advantage of that information, you know, capitalize on it, leverage it, uh, because it described pretty much what that person would have to do to get better. And uh, that's how we came up with all the protocols, which is the other half of the story, I guess. But the H-I-D-D-E-N is the answer to your question. Right, right. So from there, uh, you've run all sorts of labs. So what... Did it come down to what are the uh, because what one thing I like uh, during my functional diagnostic nutrition training is that to the untrained eye it looks like running four or five labs is a lot and it's expensive but if you actually look at what certain functional practitioners are running they're sometimes they're racking up lab test costs of like two three four five thousand mm-hmm. dollars and what what I like is for a very cost effective you know little package of tests we can you know discover a ton of healing opportunities as you as you put put them so what are for the folks listening what are the tests that would be kind of the the core few tests that we would run to identify these healing opportunities yeah and and this was so much fun to discover too you know the the saliva test that i was running initially remember my first year it was all all i ran was saliva tests for hormones and it took you know i was very very busy and and started adding then a urine test for uh like oxidative stress and liver function and uh digestive markers you know so so it was saliva then i added urine testing then of course um, people need to be screened for pathogens. So we would do stool testing. And then they need to be screened for food sensitivity. So we do blood testing on that. So uh, we need bodily fluids or, uh, to get those uh, that those categories of healing opportunities can be covered with blood, saliva, urine, and stool. And you said that it might, 
you know, sound expensive to some people. Well, remember, this, these are a, a demographic or a group of people who are caught in a frustrating cycle of trial and error. You know, they're going from one practitioner to the next, and they were running, oh, it sounds like thyroid. They run a thyroid test. Yeah, and they treat, mm. they start giving them thyroid supplementation, and it might, they might feel a little bit better, but they're not healing, not really getting uh, holistically um, better, you know, yeah. um, they're, they're not learning much. They're just buying some product and, and trying that. And then it might have a new complaint and it sounds like low testosterone. So they, they measure that. They, yep. It's low, you know, pat myself on the back again. I found another problem. So it's just a bunch of trial and error and trial and error. So by just going ahead and just getting the labs done, you're going to actually save yourself a lot of time, frustration, mm-hmm and money and some people are very desperate so yeah. to spend you know around a thousand dollars or less on labs really isn't much of a stretch yep this is what i'm, I'm trying to educate uh, folks is y- you are much better off investing in three tests now rather than doing one doing something you know about it doing another one in three months and then because what you could have done is identified all of those things at the start address them in the, that initial protocol and you may have saved yourself maybe two, three, four, six, maybe 12 months in some cases, depending on how fast you go with it. Sure. Sure. And, um, you know, the, the people who are out there running one lab, they're using, and it's largely the way they're trained, um, uh, the symptoms or maybe a cluster of symptoms, which is yeah. traditionally, reliable like thyroid symptoms are, are easy everyone knows the list of, of things and then you'd run that thyroid test and, and again sort of pat yourself on the back i found your problem well you really did it you know and and again you can give that person some medication or something that changes the test results yeah. but it's not going to really heal the whole body and so um that's treating the paper in our view mm. and i learned all this the hard way christian you know that yeah. i I yeah. was um, run a test and the person I'd work with the person. Well, now you need to run another test. And, and then, you know, and we were building layers. It was always headed in the right direction. But I had people say to me, Hey, Reed, why, why didn't you just run all the tests at once? <laughs> you know? And so I said, Hey, good idea. You know, I just, I just thought that this would be an ongoing process of discovery and found out mm, no one wants to, they want to end the cycle of trial and error, not just run another lab and run another, another lab. The other problem, of course, with running one lab or even two sometimes is you you leave a lot of healing opportunities on the table. Yeah. If you say, oh, it's leaky gut and thyroid, and you just work on that, well, you could be leaving an awful lot of other, you know, like, again, what's going on with the immune system and detoxification and the hormone balancing and, and all the other things you must do to be really healthy. And so as soon as someone labels it and starts treating that, they leave probably, you know, an, at least an awful lot of good work to be done. They leave that off the table and the person ends up switching practitioners. They remain caught in that cycle of trial and error. Absolutely. Like what one prime example is folks that, can they, you know, people will say, I eat a healthy diet. So they feel like you don't, they don't need to run a food sensitivity test. So meanwhile, when they do run it eventually, like four five, six months later, they discover that all along they've been eating three, four, at least foods that mm-hmm. were causing inflammation and immune reaction. So mm-hmm. you could have saved yourself all that low level, uh, you know, degeneration, immune activation, et cetera, if you had just, you know, invest a little bit at the start, but, um, yeah, sure. I like you see. I, yeah, I like the way, I like the way uh, that you teach and the the model, <clears throat> the model of FDN. It's not about creating r- recurrent custom from one person. It's about teaching that person how to basically become a self healer and then letting them, you know, use their newfound knowledge to maintain a healthy lifestyle. We just kind of help them, you know, identify those healing opportunities. So the, the the what I like about the mission of FDN, and this is why I brought you on the podcast because uh, the podcast is, you know, my space to share the work of people that are m- making the world a better place in some mm-hmm. way, right? And what I like is that 
th this model scales in a, in a, in an amazing way where we can reach a lot of people rather than you know you find a few you know how they in certain businesses like you 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 have your cash cow client and you just want to nurture those relationships it's nothing to do with that that's what i right. really like about yeah well, it, it evolved uh, just from wanting to help and to be a practitioner in our, our world. That's the prerequisite. You have to be uh, have a high desire to want to help others. Mm -hmm. And you got to be willing to walk the talk. You know, that's mm -hmm. the other, setting an example in terms mm -hmm. of your own lifestyle has to be something people want to follow. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, one thing we, we don't do is uh, we, we have to end that cycle of trial and error. People, it's as simple as this. People are stuck on their healing journey. You know, they're on one, but they're just stuck or they're, or they're running up against uh, brick walls and dead ends and all kinds of things. We get people unstuck by uh, running the labs, identifying this constellation of healing opportunities, and then applying the general principles of health building. Now, that means lifestyle. So that's where our D-R-E-S-S, -S, the dress for health success comes in it's um you know not for us to treat uh you know to medically diagnose and treat any specific thing it's just for just look at what's out of balance what needs uh some correction and then apply these general principles found in the correct diet for each person and we can determine what that is obviously rest is really critically important i'm not just talking about sleep talk about resting your emotions and you know um, all kinds of aspects of one's one's person. Uh, diet, rest, the E is exercise, of course. The two S's, D-R-E-S-S, -S, is stress reduction or stress management and supplementation. And I don't sell my own brand of supplements. I'm not here to sell anything like that. Um, but I know a lot about them and can use them correctly with each individual to support or stimulate or you know substitute for what's missing from their diet. And uh, they can self-treat too, so you know people can self-treat. It's yeah, it's totally that's it. Yeah. So um, so again, we if you're stuck on your healing path, what we deliver is unstuckness. You know, mm. it's it's not like oh I've got this I want to get rid of it. Point A, point B. You know, I had migraines now they're over with. Yes, that should happen. But it's much more like you were stuck on your journey. Now you're unstuck and you have a pattern to follow. You've got the uh, instructions, you know, the, um, yeah. the, the lifestyle, the D-R-E-S-S. -S. And yeah. it's a way I, to live. I love it. Love it. I want to unpack the, the first S. So the stress reduction or stress management. So a lot of folks, <clears throat> first thing, when you, when you say stress, they think, work stress, psychological stress, but can you tell, tell, tell the listeners that, that, that there's a whole wide variety of different stressors, both internal and external to the body. Can you, can you, you know, unpack that a little bit and, 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 yeah. and kind of, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, listeners, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if I say the word stress, you probably think of, you know, work or relationships or money or something in the mental, emotional category. And that's certainly, you know, ubiquitous, those kinds of things. Um, I'm not an expert in, in those things as much as I am more in the, um, the physical trauma and the kind of things that happen to you. Like I personally, just yesterday, Christian, I went and I got stem cell injections in my shoulder here wow. and in my in my knee on the other side my right shoulder and my left knee and um it was painful and even now i'm 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 hurting a bit but i've had very stress i've i did jujitsu kickboxing surfing motorcycle riding i played football and i've just got a really well used body yeah. So those aches and pains and, and dysfunctional uh, joints and things like that um, can really take a toll. That's just as stressful as, you know, you hate your job or your relationship's bad or you got, you know, financial troubles, these mental, emotional things. Your body responds to these, this physical trauma and uh, weaknesses and imbalances this was the same thing. It throws your hormones out of whack. That can throw your immune system off. Now you can get, it's just a downward spiral, as you can see. 
Yeah. And it's also very true with the uh, what we would just call biochemical or chemical stressors. Remember where I started, there's, you know, an environmental law in cleaning up the planet. And, and there are um, tens of thousands of chemicals being dumped into the environment every day. It's hundreds of pounds per person per day. And so, and it's not an exaggeration, hundreds of pounds per person per day being dumped in the environment. That just can't be good for anything mm. uh, besides the birds, bees, water, air, trees, and, and such. Um, it hurts us. And so, and so you've got those type of chemical things. Now you also have um, others that are totally, you're blind to electromagnetic frequencies, radiation and things. And then you've got the internal, the things that your own body produces, toxins. So a body that's not uh, detoxifying properly can be in trouble too. So um, what got me started on this uh, partly was that in uh, 2001, I read an article uh, in a natural wellness magazine, uh, it was, and it said that stress was the cause of 70 to 80% of all doctor's visits. Yeah. And so, and it was the, the cause of half of all disease. So, so I started looking into it way back then. And, um, you know, that's where we're able to sort it out and unpack it the way we do. Stressors like food sensitivities, very easy to detect. All the pathogens and overgrowth and imbalances in flora and the microbiome, easy to detect. Um, maybe not quite so easy to correct, but at least you know what you need to work on. And again, yeah. so so we get people from stuck to unstuck by now they're in a process of discovery and um, moving forward and correcting course. Um, it, it's not a prescription like take this for that. It's a way to way to live, which I know you support. Yeah, like this is literally, literally my favorite topic that we're talking about. So, <laughs> it's <laughs> doing interviews like this is like Christmas Day for me. And another really big and in, um, prevalent stressor that people are generally not aware of is blood sugar dysregulation. I think this one. Can you actually maybe unpack that a little bit? What can let's say we eat too many carbs at lunch? What kind of a cascade can that put in our body into over the, the next, I'd say, couple of days? Sure. Well, if you eat poorly, let's start there. You're eating uh, like you think that a, a you know candy bar, chocolate bar is a good healthy snack because it's got peanuts on it in it. That's obviously false, and you're going to be spiking your blood sugar. You, you're going to cause uh, carbohydrate metabolism issues. We won't unpack that too deeply, but um, when you're not um, in metabolizing uh, carbohydrates right, it'll lead towards you're not metabolizing your proteins and fats correctly either. You're just going to throw the body off. This creates metabolic chaos. I mean, I think you could say that the process of a stimulus from outside, you know, sort of entering the body like you're you're eating poorly or you're not exercising or you smoke cigarettes or some ridiculous thing, you know, you're causing chaos in the body. Now we're all different. There's weak and, and we'll have different sort of weak links in metabolism. And there are just thousands and thousands of metabolic processes going on. So you're bound to mess something up. And then those things start to affect each other. So if you picture the surface of a pool uh, that's perfectly smooth and you throw a handful of little rocks in there, not only will we get the splash in the ring from each rock, those rings, you know, collide with each other and yeah. create new problems, which frankly are undiscoverable. We, we, there's, there's not enough testing and there's certainly no one test. And so we just look at, um, that's why we use that constellation of things. But yeah. um, I think the idea of metabolic chaos uh, is really an important concept and everyone's so different with different weak links in metabolism. Um, you know, and we, we just get out of balance in so many different ways. And then we lose, yeah. we start to lose resiliency, you know, so it's, it's hard to bounce back if it just keeps going and going and going and going. Yeah. You know, that kind of makes sense why we keep discovering new health conditions, diseases, uh, 
like this we have thousands of them classified and we we keep discovering new ones new new it's just this if you keep adding metabolic chaos on a system it just keeps breaking down in new and different ways that kind of actually makes sense that analogy with the pool and throwing the pebbles in um next up i want to i want to really talk because it, little preamble so what we have been taught for the most part is and e even i lived like this uh, for a long time until ba basically until I kind of discovered FDN. But if I have a headache, I take ibuprofen, right? If I uh, have a pain in my back, I might take, you know, I, I, I might like put like a, some Voltero gel or some type of gel. Uh, that is treating the symptom. But can you tell us why? this is exactly the wrong approach to dealing with whatever ails us. Sure. Sure. Well, you know, getting relief for symptoms isn't wrong. You just don't want to stop there. And so, you know, um, you hear a lot of sort of natural type practitioners say symptoms don't matter. And in the long run, they're not the problem. They're the result of the problem which is upstream. And so um, you might be inclined to just ignore them. Well, that's not good either because you can't have your clients walk around in pain or having hot flashes. Or say, so there is such a thing as intelligent relief care. Yeah. And, you know, the more natural, the better, in my opinion. That actually where I did a little bit of good 20 plus years ago now, when I learned to do uh, the nutrition, the, the course I was going to, it was a lot of supplementation with, with um, all natural products. And, and it, was, it was kind of a replacement for drugs. So instead of drugs, which, you know, have all kinds of toxic side effects and all that, yeah. um, use natural products. Well, that, I think that's a more intelligent form of relief care. But if you don't continue uh, the investigation go upstream again if you know let's look at the hormones the immune system digestion detoxification energy production and then autonomic balance these things are incredibly important and my just you know those that was kind of my discovery the h-i-d-d-e-n yeah. if you fix those things or return uh, balance and resiliency you return health and symptoms just go away you know i don't really other again, other than that short period of relief care, uh, don't pay much attention to them. It's it's corrective care. There's a corrective diet that's right for you as an individual, and there's corrective uh, sleep, you know, and rest, and there's corrective exercise, and, and obviously with stress reduction, there's a lot of unpacking to be done there. We mentioned foods and the environment, and um, you know pathogens, bugs and things. Um, and then supplementation, I think is required because uh, the food quality just isn't what it used to be. I actually ate food that my grandfather's grew, but you don't find people mm. doing that anymore. Mm. You know, all the natural rich uh, minerals and vitamins and, and things. Um, it's not in today's food to the same level as it used to be. So we need, I think we need to supplement vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, antioxidants, and these phytonutrients, trace elements. These, these things could be supplemented with very high quality products today. Absolutely. I totally agree there. I'm, I'm a big proponent of supplementation as well. Um, can you, I, I want to ask you a few questions about the future of FDN, but before, before we get there, I, 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 I want to give folks a little bit more of a taste for the, the dress protocol. So as, as you already mentioned, D-R-E-S-S, -S, so diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, and supplementation. So we touched on stress reduction and the various stressors mm -hmm. that can um, contribute to all manner of um, dysfunction in the body. But can you talk about the diet? Because the reason I I want to talk about diet is I discovered the metabolic typing diet book a few months before I, I joined FDN, the FDN course. And after implementing that diet with me and my partner, it was an absolute transformation. So can you tell us how you discovered that, you know, I, I don't want to say like 
I know it sounds like a, a big thing to say, but that that is the optimal diet. But can you tell us what 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 does the D in dress really kind of uh, how do you how do you sure. Uh, define that? Sure. Well, we we accept the uh, pr there's a precept that there's no one diet right for everyone. That's mm -hmm. obviously true. There are foods that are bad for everyone, but you can't say a, uh, one particular food is good for everybody. And so, mostly, I learned this from. The author of the book you mentioned, it's it's, and I recommend it to everyone, The Metabolic Typing Diet by Bill Wolcott, William Wolcott. Um, and I remember the day I'd been working on this for years uh, in the clinic. And then I walked into a Borders bookstore, probably almost, you know, well, probably 18 years ago, 19 years ago, walked into a Borders bookstore. They're not in business anymore. <laughs> but I bought six copies of The Metabolic Typing Diet. You know, I was you know, drinking some coffee and strolling around and you could sit down and read. Um, and I got into this book, read halfway through the first chapter. I said, man, I'm taking this back to the office. I distributed it to all the practitioners in there. And uh, and, and one of them um, said he'd already read it. And it was, you know, we, we started just saying this, this has got to be the way. It, it has so much respect for individuality and it's a way to sort it out. Um, and it teaches you a lot of the anatomy and physiology and biochemistry besides uh, behind food and genetic requirements. And so, you know, we're all different. We have different requirements. And when you get it right, you become a well-oiled, well-fueled machine. You know, you just, your body starts working better on a cellular level. So when you fuel cells, properly they produce energy at the right rate and quality and quantity this is straight out of the book and bill wolcott's work you know so i just adopted that whole system as the d uh in in fdn the d in dress is metabolic typing because you're going to get it right on an individual basis it, it might sound complicated but it's it's easy to do and um you just have to eat right <laughs> yeah. and we know how to figure it's that out <laughs> Yeah, and and for folks that are like, well, what exactly is that? It's I I don't want to oversimplify it, but it's basically doing a questionnaire. There's several ways to do it, and you then it, it's it's centered around your macronutrients, so fats, carbs, and um, protein. And obviously, it, we're so individual uh, uh, metabolically that we all have different requirements. So we're in different ages and stages and our own requirements change. So it, it, it may sound oversimplified, but simply knowing what ratios of proteins, carbs, but I'll give you an example, right? So in my case, I went from kind of keto to, to metabolic typing. So I was eating way too much uh, fat, not enough carbs, just by adding a tiny little bit of carbs. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! I I could go eight hours without feeling a hunger pang. You know mm -hmm. this is this is this is why I wholeheartedly support the diet and I I recommend it to everyone as well. Yes, you can dial it in for yourself. How much protein, fat, and carbs? That's yeah. that's one part of metabolic typing, and it is a key yeah. part. Um, yeah. You know, you you burn fuel. Some people burn it faster than others. So you yeah. need slow burning fuel. You want more protein and fat. You might just have heard them called protein types, you know, yeah. that, that, and, but you can dial in uh, just like an old fashioned radio dial. You can dial it right into where your energy production and your um, sense of well being and satiation. Like you yeah. said, you feel so satisfied. That's the big you know, one. You don't yeah. crave anything. You're not hungry. You can get all the way through to the next meal without really, you know, you have to stay hydrated, of course, but you get all the way through the next meal easily and have, still have energy and um, a sense of well being. And um, of course, you know, satiation is important um, and, and not having craving. So you, everyone can dial that in. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, for anyone that's out there that's kind of got a, a little bit of their interest peaked, uh, can you tell us what is the journey for someone who becomes an FDN trainee? Yeah, we, we seem to attract uh, all, all manner of folks. <laughs> 
you know, it's really interesting. It's fun to do and you get to work on yourself. So we have people who come to us and that's just all they want to do is work on themselves. They're tired of, tired of the cycle of trial and error. And they want to learn to run the labs on themselves and follow the protocols on themselves and just have more. It could be anything from a serious condition to just they want to have more energy and lose a few pounds. It, it just depends on the person. And we also are huge in our, our main group who would who would take our course would be the health coach and personal trainer and uh, anyone who's in the allied uh, health specialties. Um, they're just do cutters who want to help others. And they may have a couple certificates. They may have a bachelor's degree. They've got a, a certificate in personal training and, and yoga or something um, or nutrition, really, really a lot of nutritionists. And they want to expand and start, you know, because their clients are all getting better. And if your clients are you know, ending up down the street, you might have helped them a little with something, but now they're down the street because they got something that you couldn't handle. That's what the FDN course would, would teach you. Again, looking at the constellation of healing opportunities upstream with the labs and then applying these principles of health. So so anyone that wants to help others can, can do it. And lastly, we have uh, physicians who take our course because they want the training that they didn't get in their training and they also want the freedom that we provide because they can you know doctors are um, pretty much handcuffed by standard of care and certain algorithms that they use to get paid by insurance companies and um, uh, of course there's geographical uh, boundaries drawn around their state that they live in th and they want to practice all over so we give them a um, you know pathway for doing that we facilitate yeah, this, it this all the logistics are in. Yeah. This is mind blowing that doctors are coming to FDN to learn how to apply functional lab testing. It's, it's, it's just, uh, it, it just speaks to the quality of the course. You know, it's, it's so, it, you know, it's, it's so easy to, to dismiss, you know, a course that you can complete in several months. If you, if you really work hard, mm -hmm. like I did, mm -hmm. it's easy to say, well, that, that, how is that in any way comparable to, um, you know, a four-year bachelor degree? And I, I'm, I'm, I am definitely convinced that it's so powerful. I'll, I'll give you an example. I thought when I started running the lab test on myself at the start of the course, I thought, and this, this, I remember I wrote this as part of the, you know, the intake form uh, for Christy, and uh, I said I want to optimize my health, right? <laughs> so <clears throat> my my comprehensive hormone panel, the Dutch test came back and um, my testosterone was lower than the bottom of the range for a 60 year old man, for a 60 year old man. Mm -hmm. And my, my estrogens were all super low mm -hmm. and my, my cortisol was through the roof mm -hmm. and uh, my DHA was super low. And I was like, what, what the hell is going on? I'm taking all these supplements. I'm eating super well. And, uh, you know, I, I've got the blue blockers, et cetera, et cetera, all organic food. This was before I even joined FDN. But then I ran the, the, the stool test. Then I saw the parasites and then I saw the, the bacteria. Then I saw the candida and then I did the hair test and I saw all these heavy metals and, and so on and so forth. Right. So I guess the, the point of that is so many of us, we think we're healthy we think we eat healthy and so on and so forth but if you look underneath the hood and you you make a few tweaks you like I, I, about three months in i i had energy i i, I mean I, I was sleeping better because i was tracking it you know with the aura ring i was mm -hmm. sleeping so much better and like the power it's it, it, and you, you know you help a few clients after you graduate and you just see the the power that we hold in our hands that we, it's not, you know, that we're doing anything, but we're just transferring knowledge and helping people help themselves, basically. That's what I love about it. I agree completely. It's it's a riot. It's it's fun uh, to know that you're doing some good in the world and it's a profession. So I've, I've created it to be a way you make a really good living. We've, um, you know, people are already in the business of health coaching or what have you. Um, and they... 
they want to just in, improve and sharpen their skills and they want to be able to charge more money. You know, they want to have, sell uh, sort of packages to a person that, that um, is very substantial uh, amount of income. And that then affords you to live the lifestyle that you have to live. You know, you need to be able to afford a gym membership or gym equipment for your own home and, and, the, and the, to do the DRESS program. It becomes your way of life. And, um, and you can you do very, very well for yourself. We've had people who were engineers or real estate agents or, you know, some other profession that they weren't getting any um, spiritual or emotional satisfaction from one bit, you know, mm. and, and we all know that feeling when someone says, wow, thank you. I mean, you, you said it to me twice on this call, you know, that you just really appreciate that you ran into it. And yeah. uh, it wasn't an accident. Just so you know, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, these are meant to be things. Absolutely. Now, did you uh, back in two thousand eight? Did you have any idea that FDN would grow so much and explode so much around the world? No, I, I mean, I suppose in the back of my mind, I, I knew I was doing important work. But remember, I'd helped over ten thousand clients, so I was uh, just you know running a really busy clinic. And we were helping thousands, but everywhere I went after a while, after, you know, in that ninth or 10th year, people started saying, why aren't you teaching others so that, you know, they can do it too. You could, you read could help a lot more people if you would teach. And I had the labs that I was using coming to me and, and saying, who the hell are you? No one runs this many labs. Well, I didn't know you couldn't do it. You know, I just worked hard and, and had a lot of clients. I was very good at, at gathering clients because I like to, to go out and talk. So I was lecturing um, like four or five times a month for years, just libraries and anywhere I could get get an audience. And, uh, and so it just snowballed. So anyway, the first course I taught, to answer your question, there was only 19 people in it. You know, it was just a weekend workshop but they loved it and encouraged me to say, wow that was the best workshop i've ever been to well then we very quickly went online and the rest is kind of history you know because now we're in 50 countries thousands of <laughs> practitioners we've trained thousands wow that's insane love it and what uh, what does the future hold for us in the FDN organization? Well, you know, I, I think it should be a household name. I, th I think every person on the planet deserves to have good health. And what we learned last year um, uh, was that if you're not in control, if you don't take control of your life, your your health, uh, your happiness, someone else will take take charge of it for you. You know, there are there are those that. Um, aren't as concerned about you as you are. <laughs> so you've got to take the bull by the horns yourself and be responsible and don't take, you know, what's handed out to you. So our training includes that mindset of being self-reliant. I mean, you can go back in even American literature and find lots of writing on that, you know, so um, it, it's an important mindset. And so I, I just see that growing, um, you know, we're, we're open for business. We want to um, have you come and learn and then go help others, help help us complete our mission. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, this actually, I really, I really like this um, concept of we need to become more self-reliant because we truly have become uh, weak and helpless uh, as, as individuals. You know, we're, we kind of defer our power to, to whatever the government, uh, our doctor, uh, you know, our teachers, whatever. So I love it. I love it. This is a, something I've been uh, more and more trying to kind of build uh, myself into a more self-reliant, stronger individual. And I think that this 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 um, this this kind of leading by example, what what you said earlier, as a practitioner or as practitioners, we need to. Uh, live by example. I, I, it, it really, it, it's kind of, it resonates with me a lot because, like, when I look at you, you I don't want to put you on the spot, mm -hmm. but you're, you, how, how old are you? If is that, is that? I, I'll rude? tell you, I'm, I'm closer to seventy than I am to sixty. Yeah. So, th th this is kind of like the guy. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'm, so I'm almost is, seventy. 
Yeah, you're almost 70. So this is what I like to see. So for, for uh, the folks watching this video on YouTube, you know, this man, you know, he, you can see he is doing something right. He walks the talk. So, um, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, big respect, big respect. That's all I'm going to say. I don't want to sound like a fanboy here, but. Well, yeah, yeah, and I appreciate what you said. Um, I, um, I spend a couple hours outside almost every day, but I start in the morning very early. I'm, I'm early to bed and early to rise. Yeah. work like hell and advertise <laughs> <laughs> no so no but I, I you know get up and do something for yourself and it's all it's all about point of view you know i just have a good outlook i think that's my whole life i just kind of been happy um happy go lucky and you know i don't have much of a rear view mirror you know i'm always looking forward and, and and what's next and whatever it is we get past it you know um and this is true um, for my 90 year old mother, cute story real quick. Um, this is just last year, went home to uh, Ohio for Thanksgiving and my mom came over to my sister's house where I was staying uh, for Thanksgiving dinner. And uh, she drives herself at 90. She lives in a home uh, just a couple of miles away. Nice. She drives over and um, she had already talked to my brother-in-law. He went out in the driveway to put air in her tires. And so he's putting air in her tires. She's sitting there behind the wheel. She's a little, you know, at, mm -hmm. at 90 years old. And she goes, hey, Ernie, who's going to put air in my tires when you're gone? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's, he's basically about Ouch. 65. And, but she wasn't kidding. She, she just... She literally was like wondering, well, when he dies, who will put air in my tire? Oh my that's, God, that's a point amazing. of view. It was the point. You know, that, that, that was my yeah, whole yeah. point was, man, you, and she's <laughs> 90, still going strong. We laughed our, our butts off at that one. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, just, uh, I, I, I like to kind of ask people, I, I need to start doing this more on the podcast. I love asking people. Uh, about their daily routines and stuff like that. So can you tell tell us, sh please share what you, what you like, um, what's your kind of like your supplementation regime? I, I saw you have the blue blockers like me. Yes. Um, so you're, you're clearly uh, at the cutting edge of, of the best practices. So tell us, what, what, how do you, what do you do to stay young? Like your kind of your supplementation, exercise, whatever. Yeah, you know, it, it varies um, quite a bit. Again, everyone could, you, you need to look at categories of things like vitamins, minerals, yeah. essential fatty acids, your fish oils and things like that, which mm -hmm. can be found in food. Um, your antioxidants, because we live in a very, I mean, one of the tests we run is an oxidative stress test. and Everyone's, uh, you know, the free radical damage, the, the whole idea of mutation from that and damage yeah. to DNA and, and what have you. So um, vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, amino or um, um, antioxidants to fight off the, the damage from the environment. Um, and then something else, you know, that would might be for your particular um uh, situation like I also take uh, anti-inflammatories. I take the curcumin and fish, extra fish mm -hmm. oil and things um, every day because I've been very hard on my body, uh, kind of overused it. But I have a lot more use of it to go. Huh, I'm going to yeah. keep keep using it. I can't wait to go skiing this season again. I just had stem cells in my right shoulder and left knee yesterday, and yeah. they're very sore. Uh, uh, but I'm I'm going to be skiing in another in a couple of weeks here and uh, keep awesome. keep you so um, supplements you've got those broad categories vitamins minerals essential fatty acids antioxidants plus something for your condition your current state mm -hmm. now that's a healthy or an otherwise healthy person so I take that um, you know when you get older you, you probably you don't want to do things that would stabilize your your hormone levels. Um, yeah. But I've, I've run labs, probably I run four or five different labs a year. I mean, every year I'm running my labs. I also go to see my doctor and get regular checkups and things. Yeah. And they always say the same thing. You're, you're fine. <laughs> you know, awesome. like, yeah, blood pressure, cholesterol, you know, all these things are, are pretty normal. So, um, yeah, yeah we, we don't just go by their work anyway but Absolutely. i don't know if that answers your question well enough yeah it um, does I, I 
I, what about do you? Do you take like any sleep support, for example, or no. do you do like no. red light, light, red light therapy? Well, the stuff the, or the blue blockers are good. You got to wear these, especially at nighttime. Now, it's it's afternoon here in in California, but um, I I definitely you, you want to keep electromagnetic frequencies and radiation and blue light and things down. You want to have good sleep hygiene. So make sure the room's dark, um, slightly cool, but with warm feet and, and things like that. And you want to, uh, me personally, I, I hydrate pretty well throughout the day. Um, the only time I might get up once during the night to go to the bathroom. Um, and, uh, but I sleep soundly and you want your sleep to be deep, deep sleep. You got to get into non-REM sleep where you're mm -hmm. out. You're like unconscious, you know, you're, because then your body can, um, purify itself better and lots of good things happen yeah, yeah. to you but um mm. yeah the, the red regimen is again i go to bed early last night i think it was 8 30 you know nine o'clock um i read um i probably shouldn't read from a kindle but i do actually it's on my ipod i have the kindle app i, lo I love to yeah. read you know I, I usually don't get past five or eight maybe ten pages and i'm asleep <laughs> you know i'm it's out like a light and I get up early at 5.30, you know, 5 o'clock, 5.30 every day. I think as well, what, one of the the ways to kind of stay young is when you have a, a big mission and you, you're active, not just with your mind, but with your body. So you're clearly doing that. So that's, I think that's one of the, the, the that's my plan to never retire, basically. For staying, mm -hmm. staying well, you might change your mind um, about that when you're, you know, it just depends. Like, you know, I told you I'm almost 70. I, I, my wife is 41. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we, we are very active, you know, and, and like yeah. to do stuff. So I got to keep myself in shape for a lot of reasons. Um, mm. You know, I still play with my, my kid. He's 38. We go, we do all kinds of things. Uh, our big thing now is uh, wake surfing. Yeah, just surfing uh, behind the wake of the boat. He he bought a new boat, and you know. So I think staying active is kind Absolutely. of my secret to everything. It's always yeah. on the move. This is a stand-up desk too. I I will switch this. I'm not going to do it right now, but so I'll have the desk, and and I use nice. a stand-up desk. That's I think that's really yeah, important. Yeah. Get off your butt. Absolutely, I got one as well. I just don't use it, lazy. Bastard. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's easy read. not to, but you got it. You got to do easy. it. Yeah. Especially when it has the lever that you have to turn yourself. I have to like you. you you've inspired me here. Yeah, just get um, this one. I press a button. It, it it it's got a memory on where yeah. where it needs to go. And um, uh, you know, I just had my knee worked on yesterday, so I'm gonna sit. But but yeah, um, good idea. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Reed, final question for you: Where can folks find you on the internet and find out more about FDN if they like, etc. Anything you want to share, plug, etc. Sure. Well, we have set up a special link for the listeners today. It's fdn.today slash connecting minds uh, in your honor. And so mm -hmm. fdn.today slash connecting minds. And uh, we have people there who would answer all your questions and help you. We use like a chat box and they'll engage. I think it's staffed, uh, you know, 14 hours a day. You know, uh, from time zone to time zone. So um, engage there, get all your questions answered. Um, and uh, we'll share that. go do some good in the world. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Reed. Listen, I really appreciate your time. It took us, you had a very busy year with the conferences uh, last year. So it took us a couple of months to get this book. But I'm, I'm really happy you could spend some time with our listeners. Uh, thank you so much. And, you know, uh, just keep keep doing that that amazing work you're doing man thank Love you it. and you do the same you're doing amazing work and here we are communicating across the planet and there's su yeah. such like-mindedness it's very encouraging the sense of community i'm feeling um yeah. y you know people talk bad about how things are going and i understand it but you got to change your tone and uh, yeah. do some good work like what we're trying to do here. So we want yeah, people think, to join us in, in that. I think we've inspired some people for sure. Okay. I know some of some of my friends are, are asking about this course and I'm like, yeah, you better do this course. It's it's like literally going to change your life, literally.
You'll yes, never sir. be the same. Well, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you, brother. Um, okay, bro. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Connecting Minds. We hope you enjoyed this conversation and found it interesting, illuminating, or inspiring. For episode show notes, links, and further information on our guests, please visit ChristianYordanov.com. If you found this episode valuable, please share it with someone who might also enjoy it. Thank you for being here. Thank you.